Welcome to today's New Life Live podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by you. Your donations make this podcast possible. Please consider donating today using the New Life app. Visit newlife.com or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Okay, this is Larry Sonnenberg sitting in for Steve today. And I'm blessed to be with uh, Chris Williams on my left. Yeah, good to be here. And Dr. Alice Benton on my right. Hello. Hi, good to be with you guys. We had, last time we were together, we had some pretty riveting phone calls. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to have some really good calls here again today. Um, We're just a week away, a week from tomorrow, the uh, workshop for intimacy and marriage starts. And I just want to encourage folks interested in doing something about their marriage and getting it on a better better keel, better, maybe it's a tune-up, maybe it's an urgent thing, but whatever it is, we can help you and you'll, you'll not only um, deal with some st- your struggles and situations and painful things, you're going to laugh. You go to a workshop and Steve Arterburn's presenting, you can't help but <laughs> laugh. That's he, what I he, love about he, yeah. he is just a funny guy and breaks up the tension and gets you feeling good again. Well, and it provides a safe place to really yeah. work through some of those issues that we can't get through on our own. I mean, for even in Ember, Ember and I, as as we've um, worked through Mylan and Kay's stuff mm-hmm. and with Mylan and Kay on it, it's like we kept circling around the same pain mountain over and over and over again and couldn't figure it out. And it was through this work that we were able to really break through these historical patterns and arguments that we would have that all seemed to center around the same thing, and but we just didn't have the tools and the resources to do it. And now it's just it, – there's so much more freedom in our relationship on the other end of that. Wow. And folks, you hear us talk about the comfort circle often, but when you see it done, when you see what Mylan and Kay can do with it, and then you go back to a room with a clinician who helps walk you through it and walks the group through it, that that absolutely helps us to break cycles and connect at a deeper level than we could before. Yeah, it does. So uh, call us, 800-229. Nope, the wrong one. Call us, 800-NEW-LIFE to sign up or to talk to somebody about signing up for the workshop. Um. I want to ask you to make a gift to New Life. If you do, we will give you 100 Days of Healing. It's a new devotional, just out, leather-like, beautiful devotional. We've had three others. And I want to, the reason we ask you to give is so people can experience change in their lives. This lady writes, all of you at New Life have seen me through, instructed me through, coached, encouraged, counseled, led, loved, me through nightmarish experiences I would never have dreamt Christians were dealt with in this life. Mm. Even more than the daily doses of practical solutions delivered in gentle, loving, respectful grace from your radio program, the resources you create and provide have helped to not only save this life, but more than a saved life, I can now see much evidence rippling out. Today is the direct result of every one of you answering the call to take take up this mission. I live a free woman. I'm in love for the very first time with the Lord and my Savior, Christ Jesus. I love that. I mean, not only is her life kind of changed, but she got attracted and connected and found Jesus. And it all goes together. You know, it's not mutually exclusive. It all goes together. Absolutely. And I also want to put a plug in for Club New Life. Thank you. And you get this video collection. And I want to speak to the helpers out there. We're always looking for good resources Mm. to help other people. So I know there's people that listen to this program that are in the helping Mm -hmm. work and profession that are helping other people or in ministry helping other people. Club New Life is a great, great resource for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, If you're a member of a church, you might just sign up and let some of your... uh, what you learn be the resource that helps you with the counseling the other church members and 
pointing them in the direction they need to go. So we have calls on the board and we're gonna get to those real quick, but we're gonna first take this break and just encourage you to hold, hold, on, hold, your, hold on to your seats. It's gonna be a good show. My wife asked me for the first time in 2011 if I would consider myself a sex addict, so I signed up. You know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop, it was the experience that really was key for me. If, if they go to EMB, they're going to be in good hands. You know, this is a safe place. They're going to be surrounded by men that simply walk the talk. The weekend leaders that they will go through this workshop with, they'll help them to get to the root of their issues. You know, I've been through a number of well-preached sermons listened to and read countless books, um, been to a number of seminars, but EMB for me was, it was a game changer. It truly saved my life. Being in this community, being in this workshop, being around these men will change them if they'll let them. You're going to encounter men that will meet you where you're at, and you will instantly walk into a safe place where they're welcome. If you're struggling, call us. We don't want you to go on struggling. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. Before we uh, talk to Brenda, I just wanted to encourage you, uh, if you don't really have the nerve to call a radio program, call 800-NEW-LIFE and uh, let us help you there. Whatever your issue, we want to help and help you find resources and ways to see that God is a God of second chances and he really does want you to live a life different and better than what you're living. Brenda, how are you? Brenda's in uh, Taswell, Tennessee. This is on WRJZ. How can we help you? Um, well, I was with my husband a total of 24 years and we were married 22. Do you have a radio on behind you? And, um, no. Okay. It's my car. Um, well, he asked me to leave last June, and we got our divorce went through November 1st, and in October, we were seeing each other again, and I was going to ask him to sell everything and half it, and he talked me into not doing that, and he was, we were sleeping together and stuff, and then... When the divorce went through and we went to the courthouse, when we walked out, he looked at me and told me he'd been cheating on me for eight to ten months, oh, and he was in love yeah. with this woman. Mm. And um, he moved her in our house after he kicked me out the day after our divorce. Wow. Well, <clears throat> around Christmas time, he started coming back again, and... Of course, I will let him in, and mm. we were seeing each other again, and in February, he asked her to leave. So I really thought, I asked him to go to therapy, and I thought we was going to work things out, and then the end of March, he moves her back in, and she, in April, she um, had a heart attack, and, which she made it through it, but he was with me while she was in the hospital mm. and anyway this went on up until may and she knew about everything i confronted her and he told her it was the truth and um the first week of june he called me and told me that he didn't want to speak to me anymore that he was going to marry her and so they're getting married november 2nd oh, so i'm just trying to roller coaster I'm trying to learn how to move on, and my yeah. daughter, I've had a really hard time with my daughter. She is 18, and she is going to be this lady's bridesmaid in the wedding. Oh, man. Wow. So, so you're hurting, and, her and so your question really is just how can you move on and get through this? Or is it something else? Yes, and I'm a Christian. I go to church and I pray and I read my Bible. And it's just, my family don't understand. My mom keeps telling me I just need to get over it and move on. 
and it's very hard for me because we moved away from home for him to have a job, you know, for a better job. Okay. But I have no family around me. Brenda, how young were you when you learned you're not worth fighting for and you're not worth being respected? No. I would guess, I would guess that your dad did not treat you like the, the daughter of the king that he was supposed to. And you may have learned to just accept this kind of treatment. How painful to be in and out like this with your husband, to have hope, to get slapped down again emotionally when he keeps choosing this other woman. It also, it sounds like you're isolated. You moved away for his job. You probably gave up a lot of your life to love your husband well. And to I did. I lived, yes. We had a home there. And I left that. I left my job. I left my family. Mm. What kind of help have you gotten so far for what you're going through, Brenda? I do see a psychiatrist like every once a month. Uh, and and where where do you get to talk? Where do you get to really talk about what you're going through and get support, encouragement, and other, good advice? Other women. Yes. Well, I really I don't talk to anyone because I'm I'm afraid I'm just a burden to my friends and my mom says she don't want to talk about it anymore and I'm just I don't know what to do. Brenda, when we're isolated like you are and, and you're being dismissed by your mom, I don't doubt she has good intentions, but to tell you, just get over it, come on. Your, your heart is shattered into so many pieces and the pain just keeps rolling in. And now it must even feel like your daughter is sort of picking sides with her, her dad and this new woman. And when we're isolated, that's when we stay stuck. It's when we keep getting pulled back into toxic relationships where we're not respected and we're not treated well. The key, the key for you of being set free from this will be with other women getting to tell your story and be loved and heard and valued for who you are. It's, it's, it's really kind of, I think it's of the devil that your thoughts are that they don't want to hear this. I'm a burden to my friends. If they're friends, they're going to want to know you're hurting, and they're going to want to come come alongside of you. It's and hard. I mean, I know my mama worries about me. I'm, I do have a sister that, you know, they worry about me, and they don't understand. Well, you know, just, Brenda, you have you your your family cares, but they don't know how to hold and walk through difficulty. Well said. Right. So so it's not that they don't care about you. They just don't know how in these situations. So there's not something inside of them that can tolerate your pain or tolerate the pain of other people, probably because they can't tolerate their own pain, to be really honest about it. But this is where getting into some good counseling to help you get you back. To help you get your your restore to restore your heart and get your value back, and also to help you move through the grief process, you're you're in the middle of this unbelievable amount of betrayal that comes with an incredible loss, and you throw your daughter's um, part in this, and, and that's I just want you to hear, Brenda, that is incredibly painful, and, and it, your pain is valid. But it's dangerous if you get comfortable in your pain. Absolutely. And, and I want to encourage you as much as I possibly can. I want you to get to the Restored Workshop, Hope for a Woman's Heart, November 15th Great. in Washington, D.C. You are going to find your tribe Great. there. You're going to find your women there. You're going to find your strength there. You're going to find your hope there. And you're going to find your way forward through that workshop. It's scary at first to reach out. It's scary to pick up the phone and call and make that appointment. It's, you know, the, you got to work through that little bit of hesitation. You, you need to take some steps that are hard. Brenda, after the weekend, the women in the weekend are then able to choose to be in a coaching group. And I, I work with a couple groups of women that 
that rely on each other. They need each other. And whether or not their husbands walk redemption in the recovery process as well or not, some of them are in devastating situations like you are. But we join together every week on this call and we draw strength and support and we, we, we learn our value with these other women. Please stay on the line. Let us connect you to our weekend. Let us connect you to one of our network counselors. We can help walk alongside you in this process. And, and we want to send you uh, Dr. Keffer's book, uh, Intimate Deception. I think that will minister to your heart. But uh, hold the line and tell the call screener that you would like to talk to our call center about and learn about what uh, Restore is and how to sign up and that, that will make a difference. So thank you for calling. Okay, uh, boy, let's go on to Annie. Annie's in Washington, D.C., and she listens on Wave of Two. How are you, Annie? Hi, Hi there. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, just uh, lately had a lot of stuff on my mind, um, and I listen to you guys all the time. Well, thank you. really wonderful, wonderful. You know, Robert, one of your callers today, inspired me to call because of something he said, and, and I guess we can get into that, but my, my thing is, my, my reason for calling today is uh, I'm in need of a, a good therapist because I've lost stock in therapists. I've had some, and the last one I had told me, wow, this is not some everyday stuff here. Wow. You know, he was just blown away. He never helped me. He never did anything. Well, tell us what you um, want a therapist for, then we will help you. So, okay. So basically, um, I was sexually abused. Uh, my dad sexually abused me. I Maybe from infancy on to oh, the point where I wow. started saying no, but my mom was there. Jeez. And Annie. She told me, yeah, it's it's a really, and I didn't even know because of the certain things I remember about it, I didn't know really what it was until later in my life. So when I actually, there was a process, you know, um, at three, I, my mom said I screamed when she put dresses on me, um, and I didn't stop nursing till after that. And then me and my mom became born again at eight when I was six, and so I really felt the joy of the Lord. Um, you know, there was, I was always around adults, you know, playing music from middle school on in bars and things like that because uh, most of the family is musicians. So I, at 18, I moved away. I got out of there. I got out of the States. I just moved away, and I've been in D.C. ever since. And I did visit, of course. And I, I was a believer, but I was of the world, of course, and traveling and doing things, and I had gender confusion. I hated men. Um, my, you know, it's, it, I was promiscuous with men and women, but I only had relationships with women only because I felt safe. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot going on in my life, and I, of course, abused alcohol terribly, you know. Um, so, Annie, boil it, boil, it, boil it down to a question for Chris and... Uh, well, my, my question is, you know, God has called my life, I, I should preface it by saying God called my life at age 40 in a big way, and it was a big process, and he healed my heart, and I was able to talk to my mom and dad together while visiting, and I told him I forgive him, and she, you know, validated, you know, things going on, and he said he was sorry, and I ended up being the caretaker out of a lot of kids for my mom and dad, where my mom is in a nursing home and my dad passed away last year, so okay, I, I miss him. Annie, we need you to ask us a question. Okay. So my question would be, where do I go from here? I'm I'm secure in my faith. I'm a student of the Bible. I I feel since my dad's death that these things are surfacing more and I don't know where to go for okay. good help. Yeah, so and Annie, and, let, let me jump in. Let me jump in. So and you have really complex trauma. And this, and I, I will say this respectfully, this is not for your everyday therapist. This is for a person who would be highly specialized in understanding complex and early childhood trauma. And there's a lot of different things going on here. There's a lot of terms I could use like trauma bonding, 
um, trauma reactions, and, and a lot of things that are controlling your life through the unresolved pain of your past. And having a safe and competent person, those are two essential things that you need in, in the help. And I would also recommend looking at um, intensive or workshop opportunities as well. Um, to get into this this deeper work in your life and and so I just want you to be able to look for that in your area and I know we've well, got a great counselor I'm thinking say, of her right now and yeah I could help you she lives right really? she practices in DC yes really that would be such hope for yeah. me perfect because, you know all although you know the, the beauty of this is that God delivered me from all of those things like you know the, the homosexual lifestyle and things like that. And I've been absent from the Lord for nine years. So, I mean, you know, that's a really awesome thing. But I still need, like you said, someone that can help me with this. Because I don't, you know, I've had chronic pain for nine years. Autoimmune problems since I was a child, but it's really gotten bad now. They don't know what it is. And anxiety, all kinds of stuff. So it's... uh, Sister, you are amazing. You've come so far. We'll get you connected to the next step. We've got that great therapist. And we'll be right back with you. Thank you. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New life. That's 1 800 639 5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll free 1 800 229 3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Annie, and Annie has uh, had some really tough, tough issues in life. And Chris, you had something you want to say. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, sometimes I use this terminology can get overwhelming, like complex trauma. And what that means is just that there is pain from our past that just compounds on itself. It's just like one painful experience after another, after another, after another. And, um, you know, Alice, you said it well. There's a damage in the soul that happens there. There's a damage in our ability to function, to feel properly, to think properly, and most importantly, to relate properly. And so when those things are taken away from us and and the hurt and the pain keeps rolling out throughout our life, it is so important that we're able to get into somebody that can help us access yes. that pain underneath yeah. it and then start working through it and healing out. And and that takes time and quite honestly that takes a lot of expertise. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Annie, um we there's a book that uh Steve wrote some years ago that is a classic around here and we want to send that to you. It's called The Healing is a Choice. 
And in that book, he talks about uh, 12 healing choices to make and then 12 lies that you'll hear from the enemy that you need to overcome and not believe. And I think that book... I would so appreciate that. That book's going to help you. Um, I talked to this call screener. She's going to get you to our call center. And I've asked uh, them to refer you to a specific counselor in D.C. because... Chris and I know okay. her, and she is really good. She'll be great. And she'll be someone who can help Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Okay? I so appreciate that so much. I really do. Well, thank you for calling us. We appreciate your call. It brings up another um, point, too, that not every therapist is a good fit for us, yeah. even yeah. though they may be good a fantastic point. therapist. Yeah. And we don't always feel the freedom when we're the client to say, ooh, I don't know if this is working for me, especially if it's your first time in therapy. I had a client who had tried out 17 different Shoot. therapists. <laughs> Goodness. And she was just determined. Yeah, yeah that's She was going to keep going until she felt the right, the right wow. fit for her. And we need to have that boldness to speak up for ourselves if this isn't working or I think I need something different. We can make those requests of our therapists and sometimes they can be flexible with us. But we also get to decide, I just don't think you're the right one for me. I'm going to keep looking. You well, know, there, there's, there's two criteria that I let people know and whether they're working with me or anyone else. And I call it the two C's. It is connection and it is competency. Mm -hmm. Do I feel a sense of comfort and connection with this person and do I trust that they can lead me to where I need to go? And if you don't have those two things, it, the, the, the work will either be greatly limited or it won't be effective. And it's another reason to seek your counselor through New Life uh, when you can, uh, where we have counselors, because in our database, we list the types of things that the counselors or what their practice deals with. Yeah, Not everybody deals with sexual addiction. Not everybody mm -hmm. deals with marriage. Not everybody deals with adolescence. And we try to keep track of that. And so um, give us a call if you need a counselor, 800-NEW-LIFE, and uh, we can help you with that. But now let's go talk to Lillian. And Lillian's in Humble, Texas. This is on KKHT. Hello, Lillian. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? We're doing no. good. Yeah. Um, I have a question about uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally, uh, multiple affairs. I um, I now have decided after four years not to be around my ex husband, but my adult children dislike that. They said, I'm using. Lily, Lillian, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. If you can get to a better location, we're not quite catching every word Thank you're you saying. Us. Um, I think I got to the best one I can. Okay, try it again. Okay, what part did you hear? Well, start from the start from <laughs> the beginning. Repeat the whole thing. Start from the beginning. I, I was in an abusive marriage, thirty-five years. Ooh. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. Sexually, oh, uh, mul multiple affairs, um, divorced for 10, <coughs> and I've decided not to put myself in the presence of my ex-husband in December, but my adult children say that I'm being unforgiving and bitter because I'm making that choice. Why, why do they say that? Like what? What, just because you're not choosing not to be around do, him? Do they know the past that you had with your husband? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The The one thing is there was no physical abuse in front of my kids. It was all done in private. Um, he physically abused me seven times during the 35 years, but he continually asked me if I wanted to have my rear end kicked so mm. that I could conform to whatever... It was that he wanted me to do, um, and I did. I did. What? Um, yeah, Lillian. One of the most, and, and this is actually for your kids, and but but just to give clarity here, forgiveness does not constitute closeness, and that's or really reconciliation. A reconciliation again. I, again, I can forgive you, but if you're not a safe person, if you cause harm and damage, and you don't respect boundaries. Then I yeah. then I'm going to forgive you and keep forgiving you and even love you, but it's going to be from a distance. Yeah. Right. And so, because the boundary is to protect something of value, and you are valuable. 
your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions. Now, and that may include your children. Yeah. They say, I don't have to worry about that happening to me anymore while I'm in their prison. Well, and he's not going to do that. Okay, you hold the line, and we're going to come back and address that and try to help you with, with all of this with your kids. My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change. Yeah, that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Last year after Every Man's Battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and and just help them do what God's doing here in the the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back, and we're talking with Lillian. Lillian's been through a 35-year abusive marriage, not a good marriage at all. And she's, no. she is struggling because uh, after being divorced 10 years, um, she doesn't want to be around her ex-husband, and the kids don't understand that. And we we had a question for you, Lillian, at the break we were talking here. Have you forgiven your husband? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. What does that look like? Uh, I wish no ill will Uh on him. I long for him to have a relationship with my children Mm -hmm. uh, and grandchildren. Yeah. Good. Good. I I have I do not have any bitterness or uh, resentment toward him. Pray for him. Um, I take care of myself today. Mm-hmm. I go to counseling. I take medication. Lillian, you know, how do you I, how do you talk about him to your kids? I don't. Mm-hmm. They they don't want to hear anything about what happened in the past. Did you used to talk about it with them, and then they asked you not to? No. 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 Okay. A a very unfortunate dynamic can occur in a lot of families where one parent was abusive and the other one was the victim, where the kids can actually turn on their victim parent. And it is Mm -hmm. so unfair. And part of the reason may be that you're the safe parent And the anger that your kids feel about what their dad did and the dad that he wasn't to them or the husband that he wasn't to you, they can take that anger out on you if you're the safer person and you're you're a listener and you're there. So part of your healing process may be 
setting strong boundaries with your children and maintaining them, that maintaining your decision of I cannot be around your father, letting them know as as you've let us know, I have forgiven him. I don't hold ill will towards him, uh, but I also will, will be firm on my decision. And they may not like that. And you get to stick with your decision anyhow. And you need to probably for the health and safety of your heart and of your mind. But okay. I would also have you invite invite the kids to tell you if it, if they can be respectful about it. How does it affect you that I won't be around your dad? Tell me how it makes it tough on you. What do you wish were different? And be open to hearing what they have to say if and, they can speak respectfully about it. And, and I guess the only thing I'm curious about is like it's not uncommon at all for divorced people to not be around each other. Like mm -hmm. what's I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Like what's the occasion that they want you guys with each other? Like would it be kids? For my grandchildren's like birthdays, birthdays, yeah, and Christmas, mm. okay, things yeah. like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And but you and you don't feel you can do that because you don't feel safe. No, no, I don't. And and I do know, I do absolutely know that he would not uh, present that kind of behavior because my my boys are adults now and can defend themselves and me well, well that that's not the point here the point is not that you need someone to defend you the point is that you would feel safe for him not to do anything you know and so i, I would feel safe that he wouldn't do anything i would okay so maybe it's just this is that lillian right now Let's let's we don't have to project this into the future. You're just saying right now I'm not at a place where I feel safe enough to be able to do that. For yes, your for yes. your for your own reasons. And that could be a proper yes. boundary with respect that this is something that can be difficult and even heartbreaking for your children, but just kind of respect them that just for right now this is what I need. And uh, we, we will come up with more creative ways to celebrate where I can be a part of it. And assess my feelings in the future. If, exactly. If something changes. Yeah. And, and you might acknowledge that it could make these celebrations difficult of arranging. Wow, when does mom come? When does dad yeah. come? That does make it a little tough on the kids to also juggle this with you. I think it would be a good it idea. And, I, and, and I have spoke to them about that. And they said they're not willing to have separate schedules you know mm -hmm. for one of us that well i i think it might one, not one hurt of my children it might not hurt if you have children. your have your kids listen to this program this program okay. this program will air um thursday october 17th okay i will absolutely do that uh, they i they'd be good if they heard your heart and they could hear some of the advice alice and chris have been giving you and we're kind of giving them as well yeah and and also just as you've done lillian it's also just important to hear them out to to give them space to express you may not come to um a, an agreeable conclusion between the two of you but at least in between you and your children but at least you can understand each other and know that hey this is for right now and we'll try to move forward in the future you know the prayer okay. um what's the the prayer reasonably happy in this life um to be supreme yeah the, yeah, the well, serenity, serenity, prayer. serenity prayer you know part of that prayer is that um we will expect to be reasonably happy in this life and sometimes the kids have expectations that aren't reasonable and because because we're broken and the marriage is broken um it's it might not be that you can achieve their expectations and so it's better if they have an expectancy that god will work through this in some way and we don't know how i mean none of us know how but you got to walk through it and see what's going to happen on the other side it's also really hard and can be very painful when we have a legitimate need. I need not to be around this man, and we ask for our children's help, and they say no. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to schedule a separate time. I'm not going to mm -hmm. schedule two parties. Yeah. So there's there's grieving to do there, Lillian. That some of your kids are not able or willing to meet your needs, and so you have to decide then how to get your needs met. Whether or not you take the kid out for a celebration or you set up something different for yourself and the family because they may not be able or willing to meet your needs. Yes, yes, I've discussed that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do, I have a 15 and a 13 year old granddaughters yeah. and, um, and two more grandkids. 
and with those two older ones, I have taken them by themselves yeah, to good. celebrate their birthdays. There you go. Okay, well, Lillian, we sure appreciate your call, and I hope you feel uh, armed and loaded to go back and have a, a talk with them and uh, just kind of work something out with them, try some things, and see if you can't make things better. You know, guys, we got the holidays coming up here, and yeah, we, we got a lot of family expectations to negotiate. Mm. What are a couple things that, as people may have difficult family situations, that they may need to make this holiday season good, great, or maybe sometimes just bearable? One of the things that comes to my mind is not, don't take it all too seriously. <laughs> I love that. And, I mean, to the point that I've gone to family gatherings on both sides of my family, and I look for entertainment value. Yeah. I don't look to think that, hmm. you know, the one that's going to get irate about political things or want to witness to the unbelievers – um, I, I kind of sit back and think, you know, this could be a sitcom. You know, you know what I like to do is I like to visualize <laughs> thought bubbles above people's <laughs> heads. <laughs> it's like if you can fill in the blank with like, what is their thought bubble right there now above go. their head? So, yeah. And we also get to decide what we have, the ability, the energy, and the resources to tolerate. So maybe yeah. we go for a 15-minute visit uh, versus the three-hour dinner. That's good. Yeah, put limitations yes. on the time. Or we just know this will be a difficult celebration, and I've got to have something separate on my own with the people I really enjoy being around, and that may or may not be my family. Yeah. So we may have to separate those two things. I used to tell Rhonda, um, we haven't done this, but there was a season that we did where we had Thanksgiving with our church friends that we liked. We were in a small group, and we loved these people. We traveled vacations with them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to do another holiday with the family. So we, 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 we made that ours for a while, and that was fun. You, you know what I think that reminds me is that my wife and I, we're not really big turkey fans. And I know this doesn't have to do with people, but it does have to do with expectations. Yes. So I, it was like a few years into the marriage, and we're like, neither one of us <laughs> like turkey, but we love tri-tip. <laughs> you know, and so we actually do tri tip on Thanksgiving. I was going to invite you to our house, but no, <laughs> sir. It's turkey Not at anymore. our house. <laughs> well, and 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 we we just design the day That's cool. to what we want it to be. Where mm -hmm. we serve in the morning, we go out to brunch afterwards. We get tri tip in the afternoon, and then we started this tradition of going bowling as a family at night. That's and cool. so yeah, we just, and we just love it. We're just like, let's make it what we want it to be. One other thing we do is we'll play a game. Yes, we'll, we'll, Rhonda's a big game player, and somehow we'll get I mean, a lot of the a lot of the games are the cards where you ask questions, mm -hmm. and what would you do if, and these these kinds of things. And it takes the heat off of a serious discussion. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Well, folks, um, we got another call we're going to take here in just a minute, but I just want to thank you for listening. And I want you to call 800 New Life for whatever help you have. And I want you to think about the New Life River Cruise next year. We're going down the Rhine. Mylan and, and Steve will be there to do teaching. We've got uh, yeah, the whole ship will be New Life people. Uh, call and ask about that. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, welcome back. Um, before we take our final caller, I just I feel like I didn't give, uh, didn't give good uh, reference to our crews. Uh, we're going from Amsterdam to Basel, Switzerland. And uh, we will have ports of call along the way that are included in the price. We chartered the host ship. It will be uh, like 78 rooms, 78 cabins. And we're at, uh, well, when we're recording this program, we were at 30 cabins left to fill. So they're filling up. And I'm just fearful that some of, the, some of you who are saying, yeah, I'll do that, but I don't need to do it this early. You're going to call in six months and find out that the cruise is sold out. And we want you to come with us. It's going to be a really good time. We've never done this before. And I want everybody to know that we do not use operational money in any way for these cruises. So uh, the cruise itself pays for what, what needs to be paid for. So let's go and talk to JT. JT's on line two, Spokane, Washington. She listens on our app. Hello, JT. How can we help you? Hi there. Thank you for taking my call. Yes. Okay, um, I'll start with a question uh, and try to summarize what's a uh, very elaborate uh, situation. My question is, how can I help my mom? I'm German. I live over here in the U.S., and my mom is over in, in Germany. The only contact really we have is via Skype, and I already encourage her by recording scripture for her and encourage her. And her situ So that's my question. How can I help her uh, to get good counsel and help her direct to what is continuing to be, to be God honoring. Tell us what she's now, struggling with. Yeah. Yes, and so her situation is this: um, she's endured 37 years of um, verbal and emotional abuse uh, mm -hmm. through my stepdad, under which I and my siblings all also had suffered. Um, and uh, recently, she found out um, they they had separate bedrooms for 10 years because of a six. Uh, shift that he was working. Uh, recently she found out that he's involved online in occult seances and also internet uh, pornography addiction. Wow. Um, mm. How can I make this short? So she had to admit herself to the hospital uh, because she was losing a pound a day uh, and in 30 days she lost literally 30 pounds. Mm. Uh, she's recovered from that, was in rehab. Um, she never had any um, um, uh, mental problems or eating disorders, anything like that. And she described it to me like she's trying to eat, she cooks and works at home as she always does. She prays without ceasing. She's saved. My stepdad is a staunch atheist. And uh, she sits down to eat and she can have two bites and she cannot, it's like a lock in front of her stomach. Mm -hmm. And so the, the losing weight situation is under control now. But um, she is back with him. We tried to, he agreed for a separation time and also uh, agreed what he has done to her. But we couldn't get her into an apartment that she could afford uh, or where she could stay longer. So um, she did go back and he's really trying to restrain himself. But actually the abuse in a little bit milder form is continuing. And so um, my question is, how can I help her? She's really 
she's aged so much the last the, since really since uh, November. JT, and does your step really is struggling? Does your stepdad acknowledge that he needs help? No, he just he has remorse, but there is really no repentance or acknowledging that he should have some kind of help from the outside. In fact, he's he continues to belittle her when she uh, talked to him about um so, so JT you know, what 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 have you like I'm sure you've talked to your mom, you've let her know that this his yeah. behavior is unacceptable, that it's also harmful yeah. and dangerous and yeah. Okay, is is your mom willing to come over here? Um we are working really hard on that, praying intensely. I just recently um, accomplished American citizenship for, to be able to sponsor her. Okay. And she she actually suffers from PTSD now. Yes. And so yes. according to where she's at, sometimes she thinks she's willing and other times mm. she, it scares her very much yes. to come over here. So, so what I think, and, and this, this may be a drastic measure, but here's, here's an idea, here's a plan, is that you go over there Find the resources, uh -huh. go over there, bring her back, and then see if she can get into some good support and help and counsel there in Washington. Uh-huh. Because when she's in that environment, it's it, this sounds like a really strange way to put it, but it's your stepdad and his behavior is almost like an addiction to her. At least that's what she knows, and she's terrified of what life would be yeah. like apart from them and so but if she has a safe way and some help and to get out of that environment and to realize that she can find safety outside of it her thoughts will begin to shift and change and she'll be able to see more clearly about what she's in and what she needs to do and if there's people to help love her and support her through that keep her safe through that um i, I really think that that'd be a great option yeah, I, I do too. Uh, it's just, I guess, a matter of prayer for the Lord to do the work in her heart to be willing to actually come. Yes. Also, she would only be able to come for three months. That's a tourist visa. Yeah, that's okay. Which is great. We we have, she already is acknowledging all the prayers from our church. We have a lot of people mm -hmm. praying for her. And, J JT, um, I want to jump, so, yeah. jump in because our time yeah. is short with another idea for you. Sure. Because if she can only come for a short period of time, I want you to coordinate it with one of our weekends. If she's an English speaker, restore could be such a barely, breakthrough barely. for her. Oh, barely. Yeah, but she barely. She does speak some. Uh, she is from the generation in Germany that mm. are really proud to speak some uh, English, but it's very limited. She's yeah. 76. Okay. Okay. Good idea, though, Alice. Yeah, absolutely. And even counseling, we have counseling here at the church um, that the cost is even covered by the church. I would be able to translate for her. That's a very loving environment. Um, mm. You're just confirming what's on my heart already. So Good. So, so I want to add also about the spiritual aspect. Hearing that he's involved in occult seances is pretty frightening. Yeah. And uh, the, de the demonic activity that might be taking place there, despite the distance in the, in the power of Jesus' name and the authority that we have under him, we can pray against that. I'm sure you and your church are already. I just want, you, I want to encourage you to rebuke Satan, to pray against the hold that he may have on that household. Your, your prayers have such power um, beyond the distance. Oh, oh, one last thing. Adult Protective Services. If she's 65 or older, I don't know how it works in Germany, but here, if we're worried about an adult of that age, a social worker goes in and evaluates the situation. So I'm sure you've already looked, but check if that's available, something similar there in Germany. No, that's good. That's a good thought. It's great. I want to thank you, JT, for calling um, book. Book, book, book. Take your life back. Take your life back? Yeah. Okay. It's coming your way, JT. Thank you for your call. Well, we've only got a minute left, and uh, there's so much that we always want to say. There's, you know, I'd love to end with Scripture, and I'm wondering if either of you guys have a favorite Scripture that you would just like to speak truth to our audience. Well, I think it goes in line with some of the calls that we've had today and something that boundaries and that Townsend and Cloud have really showed us the way on this. But guard your heart, oh, for it is the wellspring of life. You know, God 
God puts the center of our will in the center of our heart. So much of our decisions, so much of our life, so much of our creativity comes from that place. If there is something harming your heart today, set a boundary and get away from it or let it go. Thank you for listening. We love what we do here. We depend upon your support. I hope you'll sign up for our workshops. Next week we got uh, Intimacy and Marriage, and the week after we've got Every Man's Battle. But listen again tomorrow. We'll be back. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's one 800